And so maybe more macro now, because you have one of the really interesting things about you, you've been on both sides of the uh, law equation. Can you maybe in your own words explain the difference between the two and for someone that's wanting to maybe go down this pathway how they might think about making decisions? Yes. Well, I'm, I'm in the interesting sphere of law, of, of criminal law, and there's there are many parts of the law, but I, I think most people would agree that crime is the most fascinating because every brief you pick up is just you, you just dive into some some people's lives who are who are, whether they're a victim or an alleged victim or whether they are an alleged um, offender they they're going through the worst time of their life and in some ways that makes you realize how lucky you are. But um, it's so there's there's two sides of uh, I, I was a prosecutor for a very very long time, and so I looked through the eyes of um, victims of, of of rape or sexual assault, pedophilia, and also the bereaved parents and families of people who had been um, killed but been murdered. So that's that's one. So that was one set of service to people who who has whose lives had been affected through no fault of their own by crime, and that was very rewarding. As um, as time, as years went on, that there, there there has been there there are many more prosecutions about many more things than the basic old crimes that that we used to do, and so there's a lot more work for lawyers like me and and. Sometimes um, there, are, well, sometimes there are cases being run which do have a very strong defence side, and I have been on a few of those since I have since at the age of sixty last year when I left the government after forty-two years. I've been on, I've been representing people who I really consider to have been falsely accused of crimes. Uh, I, there are some that I don't quite have that view about too, but the, the rewarding cases are those where you, where one is representing someone who has a really valid case, uh, and and you can see that the, the investigators and the prosecutors have got a fair bit wrong, and so it, it's a it's a great um, honour to be able to stand up and help people who who uh, do have a case and and to make sure that they are not falsely accused and, and falsely convicted. Even while I was a prosecutor, I used to say that the worst nightmare for a prosecutor should be um, having a part in in someone innocent going to jail. So you really have to be so careful about that. But um, I, I especially see that, well I, I see that now too that, um, that there must we must fight very hard for the the rights of everyone not to be falsely accused and certainly not to be convicted when they are uh, when the prosecution can't um, prove the case beyond reasonable doubt. So crime's an area that a lot of uh, young lawyers want to go into. It, it has, it has a it has an excitement about it, I guess, because crime is is the criminal law is the area where you, that you read about most in the papers, and, and there is there is capacity for quite sensational news and and very dramatic scenes in courts. It's it's a great area, um, where, and I suppose your question comes back to you, should you be prosecution or defence? When, when I became a prosecutor, I had a particular interest in representing, or not representing, but make, giving giving a voice to children who had been the victims of sexual assault. And I did that type of thing for a long time. And uh, I think that many things changed and convictions, it became easier to achieve fair convictions in those cases because some um, some legislative changes took place and and. Um, so forth, but at right at the moment in the history of the criminal law, I think that I'm best deployed and, and most um, ha really uh, most challenged by helping people who um, it seems to me have been falsely accused of crimes. And I have reason to think that that's happening perhaps a bit more than it used to.